welcome to Let Us Reason Together. We'd like to invite you to join us on this round table as we think our way through some of the biblical issues, questions, contemporary uh, challenges that we face in our daily lives. I have the honor of being joined with, uh, by my two esteemed friends, Pastor Lupondwan and Pastor Mwemba. It's good to be here. Good to beautiful, be here. beautiful. Yes. Gentlemen, let's do this thing. So what are we talking about today? What are we reflecting upon today? Today we're talking about what happened uh, at the Tower of Babel and why. That's what we're talking about. Tower of Babel as in the book of Genesis? As in Genesis chapter 11. Okay. Now before we get to chapter 11, brief background for, for anyone who may be wondering what we're talking about. Genesis starts with the creation of Adam and Eve. Then we are getting to the fall. From the fall, Adam and Eve have children. Um, and then the children have children. And by the time you get to chapter 6 of the book of Genesis, uh, it says that the people had multiplied over the face of the earth. But there's an interesting text I'd like us to read um, that is in, in, in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. All and right. we're going to read verse 5. Okay. Uh, and it says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. All right, okay. Every intent of the thought of his heart was evil continually. Now, of course, the response to this, Noah, flood, people are destroyed. Noah ends up uh, coming out of the ark with his, with his family, eight of them. And so this is like a fresh start. Eight people, God repopulates the earth. By the time you get to chapter 11, which is where the Tower of Babel is, mm -hmm. Uh, here, and, and I'd like to read these few, few verses because they're going to be very important for us. Uh, it says, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and uh, they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower because whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Okay. Let we be scattered above all the whole earth. So they decide to build this tower. Okay. They, okay. Uh, let, let's, talk, let's, let's, let's put a point right there. Pastor Mwemba, you've got to, you've got to come in here and, and help us uh, understand this. Now, the reason for the project yes. is to make sure that they are not scattered. They're not scattered. Yes. Because if they don't build, they will be scattered. They'll be scattered. And I think that there's a risk that comes with being scattered. And the risk is if they are scattered, and the flood comes again, they're gone. All right. But if they have a tower okay. that reaches to the, to the heavens and it, there's a flood again, they're safe. So at this point, there's a problem of, of God who might, who might renege on this uh, rainbow promise and do what he did to their forefathers. But why would, they build a, why would they build a tower? All they have to do is to live a life that is pleasing to God. Because the reason there was a flood was because of that. Now, it looks like they want to build a tower so they can continue their rebellious attitude. Well, it, it looks like what God was trying to solve, he did not solve it. With the flood? With the flood. Uh -huh. Because with the flood, God was solving moral pollution. Yes. It continues. Now, those guys were saved in the ark. But this time, they're not building an ark. Yes. They're building a higher ground. Yes, true. The idea is to liberate themselves from this God who kills people. He killed those with the flood. They, they had the history, yes. everything clear. So this time they said, no, okay, fine. We were caught napping that time. So let's build a tower. But the whole idea of the tower is to continue a life ungoverned by God. I, I like what you say. They, I mean, their forefathers, I don't know how far they are from their fathers, yeah. but they were, they were instructed to build an ark. Yes. They refused. They were not part of that. That's why they were destroyed. Mm. Now these guys now are saying, let's build a tower. Yes. And no instruction from God. Very interesting. And they have a plan. They'll, be, they'll build it. It's going to reach the heavens. And I suppose by the heavens, they probably meant the, 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 where the clouds are so that when, when the rain falls, it doesn't really affect us. But this is, this is unity. What you see here is unity of mankind. And the first verse of chapter 11 already states wh why they are able to be so united on, on building this tower. One speech. One language, one speech. So they could understand one another. Yeah. And by the time you get to verse 5, God, it says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to wow. do will be withheld from them. That's huge. So God sees the un unity and realizes that with these guys, this unified. 
And it's easy for them to be unified because they have one language. He realizes that he needs to intervene. He needs to intervene. He intervened before with the flood. Didn't seem to work. Now, in this instant, how does he intervene? Does he destroy them or does he come up with a plan B? And what you then see is a plan B. Verse 7, come let us go down and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name became Babel because the Lord confused the language of all the earth and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. So this is the Lord's intervention. It's either these guys continue being united in this stuff that they're doing and they'll probably be destroyed, you know? So this unity that they had was, was a rebellious unity that was going to lead to their destruction. So, but, but, but in verse, in verse 4, that is exactly what they were trying to avoid. They, they didn't want to be scattered abroad. Yes. So they said, let's come together, let's build a town. So we're all going to stay here. We're not going anywhere. It's just going to be a big place where we're all accommodated. But it looks like God says, no, actually, that's what's going to happen. Remember, Genesis chapter 1, God creates Adam and Eve and says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Fill the earth. In others, the original plan was for them to be scattered. Okay. Now they are refusing to be scattered. They want to be in one place so they can have a city, make a name for themselves and be safe. It goes against the original reason why they were created. So if you want to do it voluntarily, we'll just add a sprinkling of some stuff there. And the sprinkling was a confusion of languages. And they moved on their own because they couldn't understand one another. And that was the birth of cultures. Birth of culture, birth, birth of, of language, birth, birth of, of different religions. Yes, yes. It, we see, yes, as you are saying it, we see the origin of language, the origin of people groups. Yes. There were one people before. Of course, the Bible doesn't tell us what language they spoke, but it simply says one language, my version says, same words. Mm. I think their gathering together was an act of self-preservation. Mm. It, it was an act of defiance to say, okay, you defeated our forefathers with a flood. But this time, we will build a tower. And, and, and by the act of building a tower is also a sign of the power of their intellect. Yes. They were very powerful people because they were saying... I mean, even God admits. Yeah, yeah. Even, even God admits. Yeah. Even God admits. <laughs> this, <laughs> this tower must reach the heavens. Yes. So it means if you are going to bring a flood, you will have to sink your own heaven first. <laughs> Before you kill all of us, <laughs> but, but before you, know, you kill all of us, you'll have to think heaven. I'm thinking know? of this skyscraper because usually when yeah. we think of skyscrapers, we think of technology. Yeah. Hey, these guys, for them to be able to envisage something like that and start the project. Yeah. So yeah, the was, intellect so, was serious. It was, it was powerful. So it threatened God, I mean, humanly speaking. It says, hey, yes. these guys will do this thing. Yes. And they can do anything. They can do anything. But I yeah. wish we could talk about that, you know, just to understand who we are, mm. created in the image. I, I know that's not what we want to want to talk about. I mean, yeah. the fact that as, as creatures in the image of God, yes. yeah. we can even surprise God. I mean, humanly speaking, we can, we can even surprise God. Maybe let's not spend too much time on that. But it's something that, that's worth just, just um, commenting on. The, the, I think that the, the, the image of God in us, where you see it in the, in, in the book of Genesis, especially in the beginning, you see that people can be so creative to a point where chapter six, every intention of, of every thought is evil continual. I mean, the guys that found creative ways of sinning here, they are putting that intellect to great projects, a project that makes God think, ah, ah guys, let's, let's step down. I, I think in. creating man is one of the greatest risks that God took. Okay. I mean, creating man is not only, it's not his only project in the universe. Yes. He did a lot of things. He's done a lot of things. But creating man and replicating himself in man, who can reason like him. So it's no longer a question of instruction. He says, no, let's reason together. What yeah, are you true. saying? There's, yeah. there's a beautiful <laughs> quotation from the book Education. Yeah. What there is saying? a line that says, they, um, yeah. um, they, they, they've, been, they've been created and given power akin, akin. Yes. to that of the, the creator. The, creator. <laughs> the ability to think and yes. to act. Yes. Even yes. if you are running away from him, that, that power is still there. True. It's amazing. I think we, we just have to stop right there. We need to come back on this point and, and, and look at this scattering, whether it was a blessing or a curse or maybe a blessing in disguise, who knows. Mm. And, don't go away. Please remain on the table while we um, take a break. Um, thank you. Welcome back. You are still with Let Us Reason together. Um, our, our point, uh, gentlemen, we, that we 
um, we're looking at before our break is in the, on that scattering. Mm -hmm. God comes down and he says, we, we need to do something. Yeah. We need to scatter these guys abroad. We need yeah. to um, confuse their language, confuse their, their, their unity. Um, let's pick it up from there. I think the first thing about the scattering is that it was better than being destroyed. It allowed them to live their lives, start afresh. Um, and so, so it, was a, it was a much better intervention for the, for the people who had built the tower. Much better intervention than a flood or other similar uh, uh, intervention. So you, basically, you are saying um, this qualified uh, for them to be destroyed. I mean, it, I mean, it, it was not just a, a, a project that they were developing like technology or trying to. Mm. No, no, no. These guys were intent on being rebellious. They were being rebellious. Uh, and also, because remember, choosing to remain in this one place meant that they did not want to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. They wanted to be here. And so God is still able to achieve his goals, even in our rebellion. He just finds other ways of stepping in. Beautiful. And in this case, he stepped in with language and the people get scattered. And I suppose when they move there, because they under, you know, we understand each other and we move, Together, you, yeah. we can think it's our thing yeah. that we understand each other and they are able to move and end up filling the earth. So, so I think it was a blessing for them to have been scattered because it, it allowed them to focus on other things and in the process start fulfilling the original plan that God had for humanity. Yeah. But can, can you just say this, the scattering, the scattering, God was not just scattering them, they, it was a consequence. In other words, they're, they're building a project mm. uh, and then and one says, can, can I have a brick? Mm. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't understand what he means and he Sapes comes with ten. something like, else. Uh -huh. can, can I have a, he, he says, <laughs> no, but then there's confusion, they're fighting. Says, hey, and then I can hear you, Okay, I can hear you guys, yeah. let's go to, uh, these guys are really, uh, they are, yeah. then they start moving. Yeah. And which was actually what you say, yes. it was God's intention. It was it, it was, I, I see a formula here. When you look at the Bible, actually, when you look at Genesis 1 verse 1, mm. you know, it to say God created the heavens and the earth. And then it would say, and the earth was formless mm -hmm. and void. Uh -huh. In other versions, it, it would say it was chaotic. Mm -hmm. In the Hebrew, they say it was tohu abo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can Confusion. tell. Confusion. Yeah, yeah. It, it was chaotic. Now, one would say, but how, how does God begin creation with the chaos? Mm -hmm. You might be tempted if you were to, you know, to say, to allegorize, to say, well, maybe God uh, uses chaos for order. <laughs> That's how he does things. He starts chaotic creation. <laughs> and these guys, he also introduces disorder. Mm. He confuses them. And the word confuse is very... You know, very interesting the way it is. It's made of two words, con and fuse. When you fuse, mm -hmm. you join two things together. Mm -hmm. But when you con fuse, mm. you join things wrongly the other way. Okay. You see, so these guys were fused very well, mm -hmm. but he confused them. Okay. Now I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he joined them the wrong way. But guess what? Huh. That confusion does not result in aggression among themselves. True. Okay. It results in an orderly departure and the peaceful from the project. Me. Yes. An orderly departure from the project. So God has actually achieved his objective while preserving their lives. Yes. While intervening in their lives. And he wants to reintroduce himself in an orderly way. So he introduces order. They depart gracefully. They form people groups. We are not told of war mm -hmm. and violence. No, no. They just speak their self. We you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, then you are my brother. Mm -hmm. Let's go together. So they left like that. So we can say that was God's intervention in human life, despite the rebellion. So I, I want you to come in there, Pastor Lupondwana. This, this concept of scattering mm. in order to bring together, this, this thing of um, creating chaos in order to bring harmony mm. and, and unity, this idea of cursing in order to bless. Can you, can you pick that up? Be, 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 when he scatters them, at that point, it looks like it works against them. Also, at, after they get scattered and they leave, they leave with this meta-narrative of the plan of salvation, the players in the plan of salvation uh, that, that they've picked up from Noah and Noah's kids and so on and so forth, that there is, there is God, there is God and there are, there, are, there, are, there are angels 
and uh, he had a son of God. There was this one that fell and the others followed him. And, um, and God is going to come up with a plan to, to save. That matter, not, they live with it. But in different parts of the world, as they have their own languages, and as this original narrative develops, it gets distorted. And it appears though it, it was distorted across the board because in some parts, this narrative of God and angels becomes a king of gods and other gods and lesser gods, good gods and bad, God, bad gods, gods who are responsible for evil. In other parts of the world, there's God or a great spirit and then there are other spirits and people try to make sense of it. Maybe these are our ancestral spirits. They don't quite understand the evil ones. Those are the responsible for witchcraft. But everyone is trying to make sense of that original meta narrative. And by the time you finish chapter 11, you realize that no one has it right. Okay. Right. No one has it right. No one has the right religion. By the time... But they couldn't have the right religion. You know why? Mm. Because that was the reason why they were scattered. It True. was already, they had already departed from God. So even from the, from the point, from the origin, from the, from the Tower of Babylon, as they were scattered, they, they, that, that corrupted... Uh, understanding of God, God just became and the whole worse. Plan. True, it became worse. So by the time he calls Abraham, Abraham also does not have the right religion. Of he's not in that. No, he, he doesn't. No one has the right religion at that time. So God calls and he starts after. Now this is the third start. The first start you see in the book of Genesis. Eh? Adam he he starts. And then it goes wrong, flood. And then Noah becomes the, the second okay. start. And that one goes wrong in the power of Dad, then Babel. Abraham. Then he comes with Abraham. Third start. Now I'm going to start with Abraham. And, and he's, he starts with Abraham to say, and, and all nations will be blessed through you. Now he starts talking to Abraham, revealing himself to Abraham. But something interesting Paul says in the book of Romans, even though he, God may have, may have revealed himself to Abraham, Paul says in Romans chapter one, that his invisible attributes were revealed and, 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 and to, to, to peoples all over the world, such that no one is with excuse when they practice ungodliness because they knew right and wrong from God's invisible attributes that were visible through nature. They could pick it up. So, so that scattering does not mean when they left the tower, mm -hmm. the knowledge of God. In other words, the languages they spoke mm -hmm. are not indicative of the fact that the knowledge of God was deleted from their mind. No, it was not deleted. Maybe corrupted. corrupted. They were, it was corrupted, okay. yes. but they knew who God was. Yes. Okay. Could we then think to say, confusion makes you teachable? Did he confuse them so that they That's may be point. teachable? Because if you are not, somebody says, if you are not confused, then you are not learning. You probably think you are right already. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, maybe was he putting them in the also, Yeah. Maybe if, if, if in your confusion, yeah. you're making progress. Yeah. If in your rebellion, there's progress. Yeah. You cannot be teachable. Yeah. But once you are paced into a corner yeah. where you actually see that we're not making any progress. Now, That's right. And then you are able to look for other options. Yes. I get, I get, I get that. Mm. Okay. So uh, we, we are saying when, 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 when God, as you are saying, comes through Abraham. God is, remember with Noah, he takes 120 years. Mm. But with Abraham, there's no... Time frame. Time frame. No. It's, it's a continuous reintroduction mm. of who God is. is. Yes. Not through punishment, mm -mm. but through development of a human being yes. in terms of moral behavior. Yes. Because that's why we are, we are known as Abraham's children, the father of the faithful. It's interesting the point you say not through punishment. Mm. It's through blessing. It's because through blessing. Because all nations yeah. will be blessed through you. Through you. So, because so, so, so the, the, what I will do, I will bless you in such a way that they will get to see me and my works in you. In they will you. see my love and care uh, f that, that I have for you. And they too will be attracted by that love. So he's going to win. Now the third intervention, yes. the third fresh start. is winning. It's winning over through blessing. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, avoiding... Um, this whole issue of rebellion. On that point, gentlemen, I think we need to take a break and drink some water. And uh, don't forget to engage with us. The contact details are there on the screen. You can you can you can uh, see them. I think I'm I'm beginning to enjoy this. I don't know. I hope we 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 we're making some some progress. Uh, there's no confusion around this table. I, I, I hope so too. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
Welcome back to Let Us Reason Together. We're still on this uh, topic on the Tower of, ba Tower Tower of Babel. Babel. Yes. I think where we left off is God is working out a way of bringing them together mm -hmm. through a blessing. So this scattering was basically a curse. So he's working, and, and Abraham seems to be the center of that unification. Yes. That this is what I want. Let's model this, Abraham, so that everybody now can come together. And that, that unity now is going to be achieved, but through Abraham. And you see what? The interesting thing is that this seems to be a two-pronged approach that God is using. He's, he's using <laughs> Abraham uh, to be a blessing to, the all, to, to, to all nations. That's, that's, that's one, one, one lane, one, one stream. The other one is that he is still present. In the, with, with the other peoples. His Holy Spirit is still there. This is why when you, when you go to the Bible, uh, you find that, uh, you, that they are able to have a prophet in, in the person of Balaam in Moab. You know, he's, there. He's, not, he's not part of the people of Israel, but God is there. He talks to him, his conversations with him. Uh, he's not in Israel. By the time you get to the New Testament, Cornelius is a Greek guy. He's able to have a vision of an angel. So, so God has not really forsaken these people. Not only has he revealed himself to them, he continues to work with them where they are. Uh, to, to try and to, to preserve them, to, 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 to advance the, the, these invisible attributes of godliness uh, in, in their minds, in their cultures, in their religions. God continues to work with them. And the interesting thing is that in all of these religions you see and, and communities around the world, all of them with this distorted view of God and the plan of salvation seem to have a sense that you can speak to a spirit. And I think to a large degree, these were, these were the angels that we're dealing with. You can speak to the spirits, but you needed some form of medium. In some areas, it was a priest or a priestess or some form of seance or diviner. In our part of the world, it could even be whatever sangomas that were there. And you see in the history of Israel, God now introduces a priesthood, centralizing uh, the access to God. By the time Jesus Christ comes, it's not just the priesthood that is, that, that is centralized. God has now introduced through the cross a, 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 a concept that you no longer need a medium. No one needs a media. Through Christ, we can now approach the creator directly. And so everybody's being invited to the opportunity of approaching the creator directly. Whatever your setup says about you need to, to go through so-and-so, you need to slaughter this, you need to give this gift. Christ then unifies everybody. From that scattering in the Tower of Babel, we all get reunified not for rebellion in this case. We are unified through Christ for eternal life. And everybody can access it. You don't need to adhere to anything. And those who may fear some evil spirits and funny spirits in their context, don't worry. The creator himself is on your side. Why? You can approach him directly. And that's the beauty of the plan of salvation, uh, what happened on the cross. All right. I, I think we can, we, can, we can pick a few things from the Tower of Babel. Now, one of the things we learn is that God has a purpose mm. for humanity. Remember, he brought us into existence. He has a purpose. And God gets concerned when he looks at a purpose that drifts away from him. Mm -hmm. He will do everything to curb that purpose. Mm. We also see that it is not the language you speak that really matters in life. Mm -mm. It's the purpose you have. What's the purpose? And also we can pick that after he has brought in that confusion and they speak different things, the Bible does not tell us which of those languages were superior to the other languages. Mm -hmm. We are just told mm -hmm. that they scattered. So it would be a folly really for a person to think that because they speak this particular language, their language is Superior, because that language is actually the product, yeah. the consequence of of you know, rebellion. yes. Yeah. So, so language is simply a means of communication, and mm -hmm. but in the modern society, we see some kind of oppression through language. True, where where True. some people think, you know, you must learn this, and there are some people who say, no, I can never speak your language. You have to speak mine. You know, so so there is no superior language from the Tower of Babel. All languages are technically products of confusion, mm -hmm. as it were. We can also pick that, you know, these people are united in this purpose mm. of rebellion. Mm. But God says, no, no, no. Because I brought them into existence, I'm not going to destroy them again. But let me change their course of life. Yes. And how does he change it? He scatters them. Mm -hmm. So that he can now reintroduce his purpose 
through Abraham. That's okay. True. Gradually. Right. Okay. Um, yes. I'm, I'm looking at my time. I want us to 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 bring this, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with the direction. Yes. I'm happy with the direction because I think what 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 we are saying, and and that is coming out very clear, is that God takes the initiative. Yes. Not only to punish. If you could use the word punitive, mm. he takes the initi initiative to redeem. Because even in the scattering, yes. mm. we see now that God had a plan to bring them together True. through Abraham, right through Christ. So that Christ now becomes the center. Yes. You see, because um, um, the, the blessing that was going to come through Abraham actually seems to point to Christ, yes. who now brings everyone together. Mm -hmm. And Paul would say later on that through Christ then, um, we are all now brothers and sisters, no mm. Jew, no Gentile. In, in, in other words, Christ seems to break all those facets. You know how sometimes you have bad company around you and things go wrong and it, you want to leave but you can't because the friendships, the bonds are strong and then you get forced by family to go to boarding school or something and that saves you, that scattering saves you. You are able to reinvent yourself elsewhere. So some scattering is good. Some of it is I, I think uh. I think in Christ, we all look for for a purpose. Why are we here? Mm. We all look for that when we are born. We don't have to be told. We, we have some kind of internal compass that searches for direction. Mm. And there are times when we feel scattered and spinning our wheels in the mud. In Christ, we find a repurpose of yeah. our life. Yeah. Beautiful. That's about it. Uh, we're going to leave this table. Until next time, God has been good. Remember to engage with us on our social media. God bless you. Till next time.